Hi guys, and thank you for joining me for this amazing Siren Song Lenneman and Kipper tutorial. I've seen a lot of you in the comments. Thank you so much for joining me. And Carrie Paris, the uh, incredible creator and uh, artist and amazing friend, of course, is in uh, watching as well. So if you have any questions for Carrie, I'm sure she would be happy to answer them while I am on here. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Gerda. Hi, Sue. Hi, Tori. Hi, Jane. Hi, Yannicka. Hi, John. Hi, Carrie, obviously. Hi, Sue. Jo Joseph. Joseph. Yasna. Uh, Gerda. Hello, Laurie. John as well. Tara my, by Miss B. Hello, everybody. So we have it. Finally, it took a long time, very many years with Carrie and I and of course Tina Hart working together on this incredible deck. We love Lenneman, we also love Kipper and the two of them living side by side in its own system box is a beautiful thing to see in the divination community. It's filled with soul, it's filled with my heart, it's filled with Carrie's heart, and it's filled with Tina's heart too. Uh, Tina Hart, beautiful, isn't it? So what we're going to do today is have a look exactly how you can work with the Lenneman and the Kipper cards together as one. Many of you out there will know that the Lenneman deck is a 36 card system originating in Germany. The first ever layout of those cards was seen in 1799 in the Game of Hope. It is a deck that has emblems on it and each emblem has a specific meaning that was given to us in the original instructions. Lenneman is read by different techniques. Some people use the method of distance, others use the game of hope techniques, others merge all of that, others read intuitively or with all three combined together. The Kipper deck is also a 36 card system originating in Germany about 50 years after that first Lenneman deck was seen. It was released at a time where there were an awful load of fortune telling decks flooding the market, including a lot named Lenneman that are actually in a different sequence to what we know today, or even with some with 52 cards and different uh, emblems on there. So the Kipper deck does not have the emblems. Kipper decks have situations on every single card. So rather than seeing that emblem and knowing that meaning that is determined with the Lenneman, with a Kipper card, you are showing a situation. It is a much more visual deck than the Lenneman deck is. And when I say visual, I'm not talking about scrying, for example, um, as you may do with your tarot cards or oracle. Um, it is a visual deck in that it has a lot of amazing visual qualities that can take the read in different directions. We have things like movement cards. We have things like cause and effect cards. And I'll give you a quick look at the book and show you, you know, a few of the things that are in there when we go to the overhead. But basically, we have emblems on one deck and we have a situation on uh, the other deck, the Kipper deck. Now, how those two are brought together to tell a story, we'll go through in a second. So I'll just put my overhead on. And there it is, the siren song. When you open up the book, you have obviously the guidebook there and the guidebook contains meanings for every single Lenneman card. 
it features meanings for every single Kipper card. But then on top of that, it teaches you how to read a Lenormand GT and teaches you how to read a Kipper GT and then how to actually incorporate the two systems into one amazing on tableau. So you have everything that you actually need within that book to read the two decks together. We did place a little bit of emphasis on the Kipper deck within the book because many people already have their own Lenormand basis. There is a lot on Lenormand in there, but the Kipper outshone it on meanings a little bit just because it is the newer kid to the block. So when you open your deck, you have the Lenormand on one side, the Kipper on the other side. A feature, which if you are somebody who reads all the time, I love this. Can you see? I hide the cards because obviously some of our cards have duplicates in where you can choose your own. For example, the state of marriage. We have a card which is male and female. We have a card that is female, female, and a card that is male, male. So you take out the one that you want and the other I leave in the deck. You will be probably very familiar with the Siren Song Lenormand and the emblems are as per the original Siren Song Lenormand and um, you know if you don't know this deck already I am rather surprised but the Kipper deck you may not be so familiar with. And when I said that each one has a situation on a card, expectation is a card, for example, a long road. You can see the visual cues on the way that the road bends, for example. Uh, we have different cards, which are all detailed in here. We have movement cards. We have cause and effect cards. We have connector cards. And we have stop cards. So there are, there are differences in that the Kipper comes with its own special set of cards. But you don't need to get too bogged down with that because the directions are given to you in um, the book as you read along. You're sent to the page or it explains exactly which way we are reading that. The uniqueness about the Kipper cards is that we have a lot of people within the Kipper cards. We have, obviously in Lenormand, our man and woman cards. And equally in the Siren Song Kipper, we have Siren 1, the male card, and Siren 2, the female card. Uh, we have different alternatives as well that you have in the deck uh, to choose which people cards um, are preferred. We have the one second, I should have got these out before. We have also an older generation of people, and we have there's the two older, good gent and good lady. And then we have a younger set of people with rich gent and rich girl. I've seen her somewhere there. Now, Lenormand, actually, if you are reading with Game of Hope techniques, then you do have a directionality in the man and lady. And if you are a Kipper reader, you know for sure that man, the, the male character and the female character, have a set direction in which they are looking. And it gives us a little bit of information about interpersonal relationships. For example, if two people are facing eye to eye, then the relationship is supposed to be in an auspicious position, a good position. If they're sat back to back, it's seen like a situation of discord. And that features highly in the Kipper deck. 
So when we lay any spreads and we have people in there, we are looking at their directions as to whether they're possibly in Discord or whether they are best friends and everything is running smoothly. But it extends in Kipper, which when I'm using Siren Song, I extend this to Lenament as well. And it also hints to the game of hope techniques like I was speaking of before. So when you have a person, the card in front of it will be considered an easy situation. The card behind it will be considered a difficult situation. So whichever um, people cards you choose to enter into, even your good gent, sorry, rich gent and good gent, etc., they all have the option of having a positive side versus a negative side. Now, the negative side, whatever falls over there, is just telling you what is more of a, an uphill battle for your querent. And the one in front is showing... What is going to be easy peasy, lemon squeezy in their lives during your time scale? So if you had a big spread, you would see how many easy cards they have based on their position versus how many difficult cards they have. I obviously can't go through but i will in a series of videos go through the different card types within here to make it all easy although like i say everything you need is actually in that book but for today i would like to show you how i prefer to work best with the kipper cards and lenman cards Kipper cards have an amazing movement in them, like I've said already. I'll take one card as a, uh, an example, but I don't expect everybody to know this already. Change. You can see the fish on the change card flowing from left to right. The water, the story is moving to the right. The change starts at this side and the fish move it over to what the change becomes on the right hand side. So we always have this option if we're working with small spreads that if we have a movement card like this, we can actually add an extra one to gain more on the story to find out, for example, the change, where that change takes your querent to. So it's a real fluidity allowed with the Kipper cards. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a small spread and we're going to take into account our people cards. They're auspicious versus inauspicious. And then we'll add on any movements if the Kipper cards so dictate that we can. When I am reading with the two decks together, I personally love to set a reason for each of them. For example, I did a blog this week and one of the examples I gave was Lenneman being a scene setter, so setting the scene, versus uh, Kipper then going into it that bit deeper. Or Lenneman being the first deck, so assigning it as uh, the trump deck and saying these are the actions you need to take. And the second deck, either Lenneman or Kipper, then performing the roles of what you need to be passive about, for example. So you can choose based on the question that your querent has for you, what kind of roles you set for these two decks. On this, I will set the Lenneman as the scene setter and the Kipper as actions required by the Querent. I'm going to shuffle them all in. 
but I won't shuffle those in just yet because I'm going to force a person card in so we can look at those auspicious versus inauspicious actions. It's the first time I have shuffled this deck. And it shuffles beautifully. I also love the little L and the little K on the back, just in case you're unsure. Wow, got some jumpers. Unsure of uh, which card is which. So I'm going to do a box spread with added movements for you. I am going to shuffle one of the people in. I'll use Siren 2 and create a box spread with additional movements if there is any. Come on. So I've counted eight cards out and I'm sorry, I'm leaving our siren there on this occasion. And then I will put all the other cards around her. So we have a Lenneman card, which is our scene setter, speaking about communication. Clover, little parts of communication. Court is a kipper card. So that would be an action. And court speaks of decisions. Behind her back, we have a Lenneman mice, which is another scene setter. We've got the sun in front of her, garden beneath her, parlor, which is the living room card number 21 in Kipper. So we've got two Kipper cards here. And parlor speaks of something happening soon. And that what is happening soon is shown in the cards around. But this is also our inside card, our card for inside places, whether that be a room, literally with living room, parlor, or whether that be um, within ourselves or intimacy, for example, you know, inside things. And then we have another um, Lenneman card. So what we see here is we actually have no additional movements. When you get no movements with the Kipper cards, it shows you a situation that is either stagnant or it just doesn't move along very quickly. With our Querent card in Lenneman and Kipper, we afforded the placements of above being thoughts, beneath being feelings, behind being motivations, and ahead showing what you are either displaying to the world or what your focus is right now. So if we look at our Querent's thoughts, it's one of the scene setters, Clover, she's hoping for things with Clover in her head, she's hoping really having, trying to have uh, positive thoughts with Clover and positive actions with Sun ahead of her. Uh, but in her negative space, which are all these cards behind her back, we have in a negative thought area, we've got letter. So she's obviously received some news that she's trying to think positive about when it comes to official decisions. So she's really trying to think positive. However, with mice behind her back, it's really gnawing at her and, you know, something that she's really struggling with. Her major problem, which is the one at her bum area, I always call it the bum card, is the problem area. And that's garden. So close family and friends, for example. So she is either waiting for some communication that she's really thinking positively on, not thinking that it's actually going to go her way with mice in there um, and really doesn't like the people involved in it with Garden down here. I haven't uh, gone into the Kipper so much, in this, but I'll do that in a second. The feelings then are parlour. She's keeping it to herself. Her actions as well, because we chose Kipper as the action cards, it's telling her to keep her feelings to herself. 
it's telling her that that decision will be incoming and it will be positive to her best uh, possible self with the bear. And it's funny with these cards. I didn't actually set any, um, any reason for these cards, but I am actually expecting communication. I'm hoping it's going to be good regarding my divorce, which is an official decision. I am concerned that that isn't going to come through in my favor. I'm also concerned about the people involved in it. I'm trying to keep myself, you know, in order, keep myself to myself regarding it, but put a positive front forward saying this is going to work out, trying to convince myself mentally as well that this is going to work out. So as you see, the, the cards of having thoughts, feelings, um, how we present to the world or what we're focused on versus our problems down the right-hand side is a really useful um, when we come to our box spread. We're going to do something slightly different now and see if I can force some movements in. We're going to shuffle our siren in and see what kind of effect that has on our read when she lands in a different placement. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to shuffle her in. And we're going to do a random placement of our lady. Start with the Lenneman Crossroads, Lenneman Whip, Lenneman Heart, three subject cards. Uh, then we have the Prison, which is a Kipper card. And Prison really means that it is the ultimate of being stuck. It can mean... Um, prosecution. It can mean accidents or negative things happening to you, uh, the prison card. But it's mostly about being completely uh, stuck. Then we have cross, which is a scene setter. We have wealth, which is a kipper card. And wealth is a card that shows uh, lots of an abundance. If you think of fish, uh, and wealth being very similar is something that you've worked for and that it pays off. We then have get together and get together is our number four card in the Kipper cards. And it actually has, a, it's called a connector card, which again is all in here. And the connector card will afford us an extra card to figure out what this get together is. We then have theft, which is a directional cause and effect card, stealing from that get together and giving to our siren. This is the worst possible place for your siren or your characters because all the cards in the deck here on these two columns are difficulties. And these two become thoughts. There are no positive actions. There are no easy actions. So it determines a really, really difficult situation for the querent. If she were up here, she would be in control of that situation and it would flow freely. But the further she comes down, the more these cards weigh on her. And the further she moves over to the right, the more negative cards um, that there are. And in a negative position, the negative cards are troublesome cards. So she's hoping <laughs> with wealth above her head, she's actually... And we're talking about the Kipper cards being an action card. So she's thinking and hoping that she can manifest some wealth for herself with regards to uh, her love life with heart at the top. And then all the other cards are difficult to her. So there's been difficult decisions that have caused a lot of discord within her relationship. She feels the pain from that with the cross. Um, prison is a very nasty surprise. So, 
you know, within the relationship, she's really struggled with some nasty surprises that have come out recently. And she really feels that with get together behind her back and theft, she feels that friends have been taken away from her or even, you know, um, family have been taken away from her. We can add an extra card on that get together because it's classed as a convene, uh, sorry, a connector card, as you will see in the book. And it drags house into that. So I would say her family and close circle of friends have been lost to her. Um, with it all sitting behind her back. So I'm, I'm just adding a little bit of kipper in as we go along so you can see that when you're actually reading with Lenneman, you have your own style of Lenneman. Adding another deck in there isn't going to hugely change the way that you read. You can absolutely read the Kipper cards like you would read Lenneman if you don't want to learn the intricacies of the system. Um, and similarly, the other way around, if you are a Kipper reader and want to incorporate the Lenneman cards in there, then you treat them like the stock cards. You have extra stock and theme cards within your deck. What I'm going to do now, just to shake things up a little bit, is do a similar one. I'm only going to take Kipper cards for around him to see if we get any extra um, movements in for you. The Kipper deck, actually, when you use it in that style and adding extra cards on, you can see when a convoluted situation occurs because your box spread will end up covering a lot of your table because of all these extra cards that are added with the Kipper system. It shows that the situation is way more convoluted than maybe the querent even thinks. So we'll do our man. And as you notice, all our males face left. So it changes our read to a left-hand read because we want the positive cards in front of him and we want the negative cards behind his back. I will stick to Kipper cards so that we have a better chance of getting movements out to play. And I'm doing this the same as the first one where we look at his current status. So in his thoughts, he has endings, fatality. Fatality is the act of something dying. It doesn't always mean a death. It means that dying off of something. And in the thoughts process, that's a real negative thought process to have. So he is really struggling maybe with his mental health or he's thinking about ending something. And we'll see that in the cards as they come up. So let's have a look at his feelings. In his feelings, he has good gent and good gent is an older person to him. So we'll have a look then at the cards front and back to see what the dynamic he's feeling something about this man and good gent is thinking something about him because he's in his thought processes. So uh, behind his back, we'll look what uh, he's struggling with and sorrow. That's another sign that he is extremely stressed. Sorrow is a card of stress. And then ahead of him, we've got good lady. So he's got a good relationship with good lady. What could be going on here with these two gentlemen? We've got rich girl. We've got another person in the mix. So this looks like a whole people dynamic. We have good lady getting on really well with uh, man and we have good gent getting on really good with rich girl now what we can say about this is that if we were talking somebody who was a family or friends man and we're doing a relationship read for example his partner isn't in this spread 
the person that's in this spread is good lady and he has a really good connection with her. Could be his mom, could be his uh, mentor at work, for example. But her partner is also attending, so they're a very strong unit. And good gent gets on really well with rich girls. So, for example, maybe your querent has got a new girlfriend, and both his parents really get on with her. It can be as simple as that. Let's see what good gent is struggling with and what the major problem at his bum area is for man. Whoa, that's a whoa. That's uh, our card of bad tidings. So some negative news coming in, where, which is negative to both good gents and um, man. And they are standing together with that family unit or with that business unit they're standing together to deal with this sad news now sad news is a cause and effect card so i'll choose another kipper i'm, I'm laying off lenneman just to see how many um directions we can get at so we can add an extra card because woe is the cause and effect card. And this will tell you what the sad news is or where the sad news is coming from. Good outcome in love. So if this were a business read, for example, and these people were relating to that, we would say that perhaps a sale hasn't gone across or the, you know, the expected outcome that they were hoping for has not happened. It's caused a lot of stress, maybe some extra work with sorrow. Let's look at the third negative card, rich gent. Now, rich gent is our partner to rich girl. We've got a lot of people out there. And right in front of him is endings. Rich gent has had enough. It's extremely stressful. He's handed in his notice and he's going. So then the other business unit have to then um, band together to figure out how to work on this extra work. Let's have a look. Here and we have dishonesty. Dishonesty is another directional um, card where we can add another. Marriage is a connector card where again we can add another. And expectation is a um, movement card. So as you see, it becomes a lot more convoluted than the situation we were first looking at. So when you have to add those extra cards. You know that this situation is getting more and more complex the more cards that are being added. It tells you a lot about a situation. So Rich Gents put his notice in, he is done. He's thought, fair enough, you know, he's going. Uh, he was never good anyway, false person. Um, and then that marriage brings these cards. I won't go into too much technique uh, with the Kipper cards, but it brings it all into one narrative regarding Rich Gent up here. So Rich Gent puts his notice in. He may even think he's wrong and try and get another contract with marriage in there and expect actually to come out on top. Or he has put his notice in because he, he doesn't feel these people are his clan and he is then seeking or has attained a contract elsewhere that he's expecting to be absolutely brilliant for him. But with false person in the mix and marriage together, the contract isn't exactly what he wants it to be. Um, so he may be a little bit delusional in that, but out of all of them, he's got the best place in the spread. He's up at the top, he's in control, he's taking control of his life, and he is doing this, where the others are left then to pick up the pieces at the bottom. 
I hope that made some sense to you. I do tend to get carried away um, when I am interpreting. I will have a quick look through the comments, so I will look very probably not with it while I stare, just to make sure. If you do have a question regarding Kipper or regarding Lenneman or regarding the Siren song, released by uh, Red Wheel Wiser, um, which is available in the comments as well. I put the Amazon link in the comments so you can get your copy. So let me have a look. If I haven't um, answered a question, please pop it in because the bottom is a better place for me to see them. <laughs> okay, yes, both decks are in a single box. Um, they are perfect together. Uh, Yasmin says, how nice the original Sirens Lenneman was always on my wish list. When I looked last year, it was no longer available. But that's maybe because you've got the double whammy of the Kipper and Lenneman now. Uh, Miss Moonlight Musing says, I love all Carrie's work. Just beautiful. I couldn't agree with you more. Yes, the guidebook is in color. I uh, am going down. Uh, oh, wow. I didn't know you were the actual Carrie Paris. Yes, Carrie is on in the comments. Absolutely. Um, oh, WH Smith. I didn't know they had it. Uh, most of your cards are sold out. I presume that's uh, Carrie. Um, are the Kipper cards showing the 1890s uh, directions? The Kipper deck is the 1920s directions. It is the directions from FX Schmidt when the publisher took them over. It fits perfectly with the Siren Song Lenneman. If we'd done the 1890s uh, directionality, then your people cards wouldn't have been able to work together in a spread. They would have been back, you know, looking in the same direction as one another rather than being able to use them as extra people because you don't have to take your people out. You can leave them all in and do a GT and then maybe, you know, you'll find both sirens in there and you'll find both of the man and the lady card from Lenneman. And that's another thing to think about. What roles do you assign these? Do you assign an active role to a siren versus a passive role to a Lenneman person, for example? It's all extra details that you can add. For example, um, Malkiel did a live at the Divination Pride event that we had recently. And he was explaining how you look for if you're going on a date with like three to five people, <laughs> you know, that doesn't, that doesn't exist when you're 48. I don't think <laughs> I hadn't come across a querent ever that had wanted to know for more than five people, but you are given that if you have a huge family dynamic, you can use all the people card within there and they work together. So the Lenneman and the 1920s Kipper just, work perfectly together. Uh, is there anywhere to find the Lenneman Revolution, Carrie? <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody. I have this deck, but never finished learning Kipper. I think the, the fun is in actually just using it and the learning actually comes with that rather than trying to sit down and trying to learn, trying to do too much theory. I think the, the fun comes with actually just laying them and seeing how they work for you. Just because I work this way doesn't mean that you, that you have to, you know. You can work any way that actually works for you with these. Okay. 
I will be doing more on the siren song. We will be going through the different uh, Kipper cards uh, on the next one. So I'll set up a date. I'd love you to join me and we'll look through the Kipper cards to really understand that system in a little more depth. Have a wonderful rest of weekend and I will see you on the next one.